Why hello there! I hope you're all doing really well, you lovely Lego addicts. It's been a little while, but I have finally finished the build and compiled my thoughts. Honestly, <laughs> I've had a lot of thoughts during this build. I don't think I've ever been as organised adding my thoughts onto a list, like really just making sure I'm really fair, making sure I mention everything I thought because I was very, very keen and very, very aware that I want to be as fair as possible. So, so I hope you enjoyed this review and let me know if it's been helpful or if you have any thoughts yourself or if you've built it. I would love to hear from people that built this. So first of all, if you've seen my original video, you will know that I was super excited to be trying an alternative brick company. I been kind of looking at ones for ages and when this one reached out to me I was super excited to kind of take it and go with it really. That obviously mentions the obvious part. This set was given to me by Fan Hall. All the opinions in this video are my own. So as the company is going after the same audience as the audience that LEGO has cultivated over years, I have kind of used the LEGO standard as the thing to compare it against. Let's be honest, if you are an alternative brick company, unfortunately you have this sort of slight disadvantage of going up against a giant that has been doing this for decades. It is easy to be quite critical because the standard is quite high. That being said, there is obviously for everybody always some room for improvement. So I was really curious to see how this would stack up. Trying an alternative brick company for me obviously means that I compare it against what I know. So let's just dive really quickly into the facts of this set. So this is called the Lakeside Lodge. It retails for 100 USD. It has 1,969 pieces, giving it an average piece count of 5p per brick. I wanted to put two caveats on that though, because this set includes a lot of large elements, like 1x8, 2x8, plates, all that kind of stuff. And also the set includes a light kit. And though the average price per piece is five cents, I have not included a light kit in that at all. So basically I would be saying that you're getting the light kit for free. So just bear that in mind when you compare it. To kind of give it some sort of ballpark against a Lego set, if we look at the Medieval Blacksmith, that retails for $180 and has 2,164 pieces. And that basically gives that an average piece count of 8p per brick but that does include some minifigures and a horse so there's pros and cons obviously in comparison against lego set it's not perfect because let's be honest they're not the same thing i just wanted to put that caveat on there but i felt like i had wanted to kind of ballpark it somewhere so you kind of get an idea i think basically 5p per brick for this set feels quite good because that's a huge amount of masonry a huge amount of large bricks and an amazing selection of really nice colors that out the way let's move on to the building process before we talk about the set as a whole basically um i felt like i really wanted to discuss the building process because i think that is one of the more important things to me i build lego usually because i want to relax i want to unwind i want to just turn my brain off a little bit and just really have a bit of fun building something nice with my hand. That is obviously what I was expecting and wanting from this set as well. Unfortunately, this set got off to a really rocky start. Effectively, this set is broken up into six bags, whereas one is by far the biggest. And then you have two, three, four, five, six, and five and six are quite small. So kind of as you go along, the bags have less pieces in. So bag one, I call it a bag, but really it's a lot of separate bags, a little bit like you're used to with all the modulars. There is a lot of bag ones. And effectively, if you finish the step for bag one, you would have built the entire base. So the base is four 16 by 16 plates combined. So basically a 32 by 32 base plate. And honestly, I didn't like the first bag. I really struggled. So there is a few reasons for that. Basically straight away I noticed that the clutch power of the bricks in a set is higher than of the Lego elements. So that comes with two things. You know it means that your bricks stay attached but yeah you, that's what you want. The larger the element the harder it is to attach them together and because the base is made up of a lot of two by eight bricks and huge plates and all that kind of stuff my hands were killing me after a while. Genuinely, it was so difficult to attach. And if I made a mistake, it was pretty much impossible to take them apart. Even with a brick separator, I had to resort to using my teeth a few times. Honestly, the first pack was a real struggle. And it kind of made me a bit sad because I was really excited for the set. This is a good example. So the clutch power is really, really tight. This plate, I've just tried to connect to this one here. And I probably tried to properly like push it down and it's still not perfectly. 
together. I don't usually have an issue with clutch power. I don't usually have my hands ache building Lego sets. I have definitely heard people say that their hands were hurting when they built certain Lego sets. So I know it's not a completely unique issue, but I have never really had an issue with that. Whereas this, this set honestly was difficult. I had to ask for help a few times because my bricks got stuck and even people that I would deem are very strong struggled attaching and detaching the bricks. As you will see when this goes on, like that becomes less of an issue later on. But because this was my first bag, that was a huge issue to start with. Also because you're building the whole base for that first bag, it didn't really feel like there was a focus at all. Basically it felt like for every step you could be placing the bricks that you needed in anywhere in the whole 32 by 32 area. Obviously you build the area up slowly, but I felt like the brick placement was really random per step. You didn't really focus on one little small bit and then one other small bit, especially towards the end when we were adding a few more details. So I really felt it was absolutely essential that you gathered all the bricks you needed in the step first before you started to look where to place them. And honestly, it meant that you had to stay so focused, so aware, like you really, ha you couldn't have a moment of like, wandering mind because you probably would miss something and i know for a fact i've missed various bits in the base because i it was just quite hard to see another issue that came up during this step was the fact that some of the bricks are really similar in color especially in the instructions so it's currently winter in the uk so it meant that i basically was building by lamplight it just was i couldn't change that and especially the dark green, the dark bluish grey and the mossy green, which is a unique colour, which we'll discuss later, were really difficult to differentiate. Now, there is a guide at the front of the instruction booklet that basically shows you what a colour looks like printed, but it's not very practical to halfway through the instructions go back to the beginning to see which one it is and building by lamp light only made this harder and there was definitely occasions where i built something thought i had the right color later on couldn't find a brick that i needed realized that i used it earlier because i had the wrong color but on a positive note what i think the instruction did really well is it showed you really well which size bricks you needed so instead of having just a picture of the brick they would say two by six or two by eight so you didn't have to like count the studs and it just told you so you could just find the correct brick i found that really helpful especially in like steps where you had to use quite a few of them so you kind of knew exactly straight away which size to look for however this has obviously been a slight negative thing because the first bag was a negative experience for me however when i moved on to bag two that all changed basically after bag one i didn't really feel like continuing to build at all my hands really hurt I was kind of like this is not very relaxing for me oh darn I really wanted this to be good so I left it for about a week before I continued and then when I continued I was so delighted so bag two starts with the house so you start adding the tiled floor down you start building cute interiors you start building the walls and from that bag on, I was sold. The main thing that helped with that was just the fact that everything I was building just used smaller elements. So the clutch power wasn't as much of an issue. So everything stuck together much easier. And because you started building a house, there was much more of a clear aim. Like you kind of knew what you were building. So you kind of could get excited. There was an aim, whereas I felt really like aimless in the first bag where I was like, I am just building a blob of landscape um, that doesn't look particularly good on its own. It only started looking good once the house is filled all of a sudden we started to have that focus and it was like really delightful from bag two this set really blew me away by their interior detail their attention to detail and also the lights started to become an absolute joy so honestly i obviously installed them as i went and tested to make sure that they were working and honestly when i turned them on and saw the kitchen it was like oh my god this is so cute it feels so cozy the interior builds were absolutely delightful yeah, I had a really good time starting to build the house and their, its interiors. It was so cute. It was so much easier than bag one. And basically, I, it kind of redeemed itself for me. Like the pain of bag one started to be forgotten because bag two and, and onwards started to make it look so good. I definitely recommend building this with the lights on so you kind of get the full experience because it made me feel like, I don't know, it was just like such a vibe. I loved it so much. One of my favourite things about the second bag is that I realised that we were building walls that were two bricks deep but in two sections. So you have the exterior walls and then the interior walls and on the interior walls there is like the cabinets for the kitchen and things like that. Whereas the outside is just the cladding of the house. 
which means that you don't have ugly connection points for interior details on the outside so it looks good from both inside and outside so I was very excited to see that. I also had my first experience of a fun haul sticker in the in a second bag. I have a little clip of that experience so let me just play that now. So I've just applied this clock sticker and it was the weirdest application it honestly took me by surprise. So it came on this square thing and I couldn't get it to come off just the round bit so I was like okay fine that's Maybe it's a square, maybe it's easier once I've attached it to here to take the round bit off. So I attached it as a square onto here, so then the residue was around it. And then apparently like the stick is underneath it, so then I lifted off the square thing and then just the round bit stayed behind. I was not expecting that at all and it was really odd, but it looks really good. Like now it's attached, it looks... I've got it on pretty evenly, which I'm very happy about. But yeah, that was a really interesting way to apply stickers. So as you can see, it wasn't, it was just a bit of a surprise. I definitely continued on with the stickers and occasionally found them both okay and then terrible. They're easy to break, but also easy to manoeuvre. I'm, I think I ended up coming to the conclusion that I'm not a fan of the stickers. They were fine for square elements, so the TV the clock, even the minifigure tools though, ended up being okay. I had stickers for a pumpkin and also for the roof and actually I ended up really disliking the pumpkin and the roof stickers especially because they are not complete stickers, they're sticker elements and it started to make it look really cheap. So basically overall I think the clock and the TV and the minifig tools and stickers were fine. Let's keep it at that. This roof looks much nicer without any of the stickers attached to the tiles. So let's just forget they were included. Because I was building this set in like the dark winter months, honestly having the lights on whilst I was building just made it so cozy and it really gave it the perfect sort of winter build vibe. It was lovely. What I would say, however, is if you're not used to installing light kits, this is both easier and tricky because if this is your first experience of adding a light kit, it, you may find it quite frustrating because light kits are really finickety and quite tricky to install. This is no exception. I mean, it's totally doable and totally fine, but it may be a bit of a shock to you if you're doing it for the first time um, and hiding the cables. Though, I have to be honest, diagrams in the book were really great. It was really obvious where they wanted you to put the cables. If you're not sure what you're doing or a bit worried about the strength of the cables, you may find it a bit tricky. I personally felt that they did a really great job hiding the cables and explaining how to put them. And generally, I liked the choices of lights that they had. Honestly, this house is completely lit with lights that are hidden in really nice places so rather with the light kits for lego sets where generally the lights are like in the middle of a roof to give the light to the whole room the lights here are much better integrated so it straight away feels much more cozy a bit like if you have your house and you have all your little lovely decorative lights on rather than the big light it feels way more cozy so that's the same vibe for this house that was the building experience as you can tell it was a little bit of a whirlwind it was quite the 180 this set did on me and I'm really glad it did, but it was quite like surprising. Definitely not what I was expecting of the building experience at all, but I'm really glad that it became really fun for most of the build. Before we kind of discuss the end result, which I'll just move slightly so you can see even more of it, I just wanted to discuss a few other points that I have that didn't necessarily fit into the building experience thing. First of all, I found that the instructions were a bit inconsistent from time to time. For example, like on step 78, you could see a one by three white tile next to a slope, whereas that tile wasn't actually placed until step 79 so that was a bit confusing and there was like for example a slope in like the water feature here that when I touched it was white and then later on in the instructions it became blue. A few minor inconsistencies, nothing too bad, it did just occasionally make you go wait what have I done wrong but it ended up not being your fault. As I hinted on earlier there's a unique colour green in this set. In my head I call it mossy green, I don't actually know if they have a name for it. It's basically in between dark green and dark brown. On its own it looks pretty murky and swampy but combined with the set it's a really nice transition from like green to grey or green to brown so it does work really well within the set. I'm not a fan of it on its own. The main thing I'm not a fan of is how difficult it was to determine if it was that colour or dark green or dark bluish grey in the instructions. That muddled me up a few times but overall I think it's a nice landscaping colour. I think a few people in the Lego community probably would love it for mocks. All the bricks in the set are super vibrant. The colour of them is beautiful. It matches the Lego colours really well in case you're interested in that. I was overall very impressed with the quality of the bricks. Yes, the larger elements have too much clutch power, 
but that is not really noticeable with the small elements and everything feels really nicely made and it just looks very solid and feels very solid which is great. I was never worried I was going to break anything basically. On a very minor note I found the instructions to be rather large basically it's A4 size so basically it's two A4s next to each other when opened and it was just one massive booklet and it was just too much basically I could never find room for it on my build table it always ended up on my lap and because I had to like study it really closely very often to determine which color I needed it ended up just being a bit clumsy I would have really liked it to be slightly smaller and maybe split in two so it wasn't so heavy because towards the end of the build it didn't really want to lie open on the page that I was on it's a very minor point I could have fixed it in a different way but I felt like I wanted to mention it anyway at the end of every bag I felt like I had a pretty random selection of bricks left over making me kind of wonder did I make a mistake or are am I meant to have these so this is kind of what I ended up having there's like so I know that the two by two brick I've missed somewhere and I'm assuming the one by four dark orange one I've also missed somewhere but yeah, there was, there was quite a few of one by two elements and things. So I ended up just being like, I'm unsure. It was pretty inconsistent, whatever I had left over. So I ended up not tracing back just because I honestly had no idea what the system was. Because occasionally I ran out of the one by one element, which usually with Lego sets you have one spare of at least. Whereas here I sometimes used all of them and had three of the other one left over. So it was a little bit random in that way. So it was hard to correct yourself. As I said, there's two elements in there that I know I probably have missed, but... It was a bit of an issue. On a very obvious note, the colour scheme of this build is a total Apple dream. Imagine if Lego came out with a completely dark green tiled roof. Like, people would lose their minds. The dark orange, the medium nougat, the tan, the masonry. There is so much to love about this set. Honestly, absolutely adore this colour scheme and partially what drew me to the set. There are so many leaf elements in this. It has so many of the elements that in every single Lego set you wish you had. And they put so many in, like the leaf elements in orange, bright light orange, lime green, green, dark green. It's just a delight. I absolutely love it. There are some really great recolors that don't exist in Lego and there is many things to like about this set because of it. Another really positive point is on the first floor or the second floor for you Americans, the house is still tiled. So you basically not only tile the ground floor, you also tile the first floor, something that Lego doesn't do in their sets, probably to save on bricks, but I really like that you got to do it in this set. It meant that every room felt really finished. There are so many interior details. Everything feels really real. It kind of gives it a doll-like quality. I absolutely love that. I always feel in Lego sets with houses that there's always room to add more details. So it actually becomes practical and livable. And this, this is already that. And I think that, if anything, was my favorite thing about the set. With the lights, it just feels like a minifigure has just stepped out and it's so real it's so livable i wish i could shrink down and live in this house because it's it just feels so cozy so overall let's discuss the end result of the set so i genuinely think it's gorgeous i love all the different angles of the roof it was really interesting to build it i've never really had this many roof elements i personally didn't find it that tricky to attach i think some people may but quite enjoyed it i love the porch area i love all the visual interest in the set there are so many details and then if we move it all the way around we get to the interiors honestly it's so cute so you have a fully equipped kitchen with a stove that is on which is one of my favorite details you have so many lovely details a tv a sofa a coffee table, a clock, a plant, like really nice curtain details in the living room. And then you have the upstairs with a bed, a fireplace, a writing desk. Like there is just so much to love in this set. I absolutely adore the interiors. They're just so cute. Really, really recommend it for like anybody that loves buildings and interiors. This is a fantastic set for that. I honestly cannot recommend it highly enough for that. I really just want to live in this house. Honestly, I think it's a fantastic looking set and now it's finished. I think it will look beautiful just on display. If you like getting sets to just display as they are, I think this is a perfect example because it even comes with its own little slice of landscaping and it really just looks fantastic. Do I think it absolutely needs the landscaping around it? No, I think it would still look good on its own but the landscaping definitely takes it up a level so though I absolutely dislike the first bag experience I do think it adds a lot now the building's finished. Final thoughts, is the set worth it? 
I personally genuinely think it is $100 for this massive a set, which genuinely is rather large, with the colours that it comes with, the, with the light kit and everything. Yes, the first bag is a bit annoying, but once you get to the second bag, it becomes a really nice experience to build it. And I think it's going to be looking great on anybody's shelf because it's a complete piece, landscape, lights and everything. So yes, I do think it's worth it. How does it compare to Lego? I honestly cannot tell you because I feel like that's a really personal opinion that everybody judges that completely differently. So I don't want to say, yes, it's worth it compared to it. I think this is its own thing and it needs to be looked at as its own thing. I wouldn't really recommend this set for anybody that's like a beginner or hasn't really built a lot of Lego-like sets before or for anybody kind of like younger. Not saying that children can't do it, but how much I struggle putting bricks together, let alone when your hands are smaller and weaker. So honestly, I think it's a good adult set, but not really worth it for children, I don't think. I definitely think this is a viable alternative to Lego. It has its pros and cons, but then every Lego set has its pros and cons as well. Honestly, I think the end result is so bloody worth it. So though it has its downsides, I think it's an absolutely great build and it's made me super curious about any other alternative brick companies for sure. At the moment, um, the company has eight sets available. I hope that they're going to do more like building based uh, sets again there is also a wood cabin that looks really good that doesn't have the landscaping which may make it nicer i don't know i haven't built that one Alrighty, i think that is all of my thoughts i am really hoping that i haven't missed anything because i've really tried to be super consolidated gosh this is a really intense review but i'm overall just really glad that i build it and that i've had this experience there was a few things i would change about it particularly the stickers on the roof i really didn't think they were nice they honestly aren't they made it look much cheaper than it actually is. I think the roof would have been fine without any kind of sticker detail. I had a lot of fun. It was great. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching, you absolutely wonderful people. I will see you in the next video, probably with a city update, but if I can get them all edited and actually filmed, because, oh my God, where is time going? It is insane. It's literally going to be nearly 2023, and I feel like I have 20,000 things to do. But I will see you very soon. Stay well. Have a fantastic holiday period. Goodbye. I'm really sorry. I've filmed this whole video and I have to mention it. I think the name of this brand is terrible. I really wish they could change it. Fun Hole is not a good English translation name. I'm really sorry. I'm sure you had a lot of thoughts. There is a whole page in the booklet to explain why they chose it. And it's a combination of two words, just like Lego. But Fun and Hole is not what you want to be called in English. I'm really sorry.